Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna sketch a cocktail in a little sketchbook and color it with watercolors. I know it's nothing that is earth shattering here, but oh, it sure is fun. I think no matter what with art, you should find what you like and do more of it, right? So it may be sketching candy in a sketchbook and maybe sketching cocktails, it might be sketching animals, it might be plein air painting. It doesn't matter as long as it inspires you, that's the most important thing. I'm using a green colored pencil. This is one of the Prismacolor Call Erase pencils. Those are available in packs of 12 or 24 assorted colors. They used to be available open stock, but um, they no longer are. So I just want to give you the heads up on that if you're looking for these. But you know what? I have a set of 24 and I find that I will choose the color I want to sketch with depending on what I am sketching. And the reason I'm using green, honestly, is because the drink is gonna be mostly red. So I feel like it's gonna give it a really interesting little vibration of color. So when you take a color that's across a color wheel from your main color, that's a complementary color or an opposite color, when you put those colors next to one another, they vibrate. They're very exciting and bright. When you mix them together, they turn muddy. But I don't have to worry about this color erase pencil turning muddy because it's not going to dissolve when I add the watercolor over it. So that's why I'm using this. You could use just a regular colored pencil if you wanted to. The nice thing about the color erase is just like it sounds, it's erasable. It's an erasable colored pencil and it doesn't put down that much color. So that's um, that's what's great about it. You could use just a regular cheap old Crayola colored pencil. That's not gonna put down very much color either. It's probably about just as erasable too. So it doesn't matter. I just, I'm comfortable using these and they last a long time. So, uh, so that's what I'm using. The other thing I like about these pencils is that since they're not very waxy and they're not super pigmented, they're really nice for sketching under alcohol marker works too because the way that I like to work in in, um, an alcohol marker is I will sketch it out with one of these colored pencils first, then I'll do all my markering and then I'll decide whether I want to fine line it or not. I know a lot of artists prefer to start with a fine line, but, um, or like an outline, but I prefer to see, uh, to see how I like it before I go ahead and add, um, I add those darker lines. And also I like to kind of jump right in and kind of draw as I go. So I'll be nudging areas and nudging lines and moving things a little bit and saving the fine lining to the end allows me to only outline the drawing when I'm completely completely done with it. I'd rather do that than draw a meticulous drawing and then color it in because I feel like it just keeps me more engaged throughout the process. But obviously we're all different people. You do what you want to do and I'll do what I want to do. This is a really cute, um, uh, cute little cocktail. Um, I found the reference photo on Unsplash and it had this like kind of like twist of it looked like um, it kind of looked like bamboo or wood or something on there. It's a little garnish. It was really cute. Maybe it's dried ginger. I have no idea, but it was really cute. And I wanted to put that little spiral in there because it's a different shape. And um, I thought it would look, you know, I mean, it looked great in the photo. So I'm like, oh, that'll look nice. And here I'm just kind of like cleaning up lines. Um, you saw me in there with the kneaded eraser. I'd use that to lighten a line or maybe just to kind of like uh, twist into a small area and lift up a little bit of line where I don't need it. But that's pretty much the sketch there. Um, and this is pretty much how I draw it, how dark I would draw it regardless. Um, and you could go lighter if you want to. I decided to speed things up here because it did take me about 24 minutes to paint. And looking back at the footage, um, I thought it'd be fine if I sped it up double time. I'm adding in some naphthol red light, which is kind of like a pie roll scarlet. It's kind of um, maybe neutral red, I would say. And I'm just kind of going in uh, in the glass wherever I had wet it and just letting the paint flow around a bit. I don't want to have a totally solid section of color because um, I want it to look like, you know, when you're looking at a glass, a beverage, um, and there's ice in the glass and there might be like... Um, you know, some puree, strawberry puree or something in the glass, you know, you, you see some different tones, you see lightness, darkness, you might see a little lighter where the uh, ice is, you might see it a little bit yellower where like some lights coming through. So that's basically what I wanted to do there. I added a little bit of Indian yellow in with the red to give it a little bit of a warmth area. And now I am working on the uh, surface area of the drink and I'm just kind of putting in the red around the different elements. So 
it's going to be um, around the ice cubes, kind of around the strawberry, around the lemon, and a little twist of wood thing. And I'm just, you know, just filling in. See, that's why I sped it up, because, I mean, even at double speed, it's still kind of kind of slow and boring. Uh, I'm going in with the Indian yellow on the lime, and I'm letting some of that red seep up over the edge of the lime, because that is partially in the drink. So I did want to have a little blending there. And I'm adding a little color into the ice cube as well. I'm letting the, the uh, paint go over the edge of the glass that you can see because um, that way I can go in later with like a white paint pen and add that um, sugar or salt uh, on the rim just so I have a little contrast there. There was a little bit of like a texture to the glass, uh, like a pressed uh, fluted type of uh a very subtly fluted texture at the bottom so I wanted to sketch that in and I'm doing it wet into wet so that I don't have a super defined line but it just kind of gives it the impression of those lines and it can kind of fuzz out a little bit. I'm adding a little bit of Payne's Gray on the edge to um, make a little bit of a shadow there. Uh, basically I want to try a bunch of these different colors because I'm getting ready to review these paints by Tri Art and I just wanted to kind of see how they behaved. Some are single pigments, some are mixed pigments. And uh, I think that's a, a color they call sap green that I'm using on the line, but it's actually more of a hooker's green um, by my eye anyway. It's a mixture of PG7 and PR101, if you're curious. For the strawberry, I took some, uh, I think I used a little bit of Payne's Gray into the Quinn Red and, um, and did that for the side of the strawberry. Then I am wetting some of the surface of the strawberry and blending some color around there. I will layer up a little bit to get these separate tones that are in the strawberry, but I'm just kind of blocking in at this stage of the game. And I'm keeping everything fairly wet into wet. I added a little yellow into the strawberry's flesh too to give it that uh, fresh berry color. Um, I've mixed up a kind of a yellow ochre color because I don't have a yellow ochre in this set. Um, I think I used like burnt sienna and maybe some yellow and I think I used a little blue. Um, I should have kept my palette a little bit more on camera. These, this selection of colors is different than what I typically use so I don't necessarily remember what I used for each, uh, each mix there. But anyway you can see how this goes together and you could make substitutions by based on what's on your palette. I wanted a shadow that had some texture to it, so I'm mixing ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to kind of make this gray color, and I'm dragging that out from the bottom of our glass here. There was a little bit of a foot on the glass, I wanted that to show, so you see that little bit of a um, bump out from the bottom of the glass. And now that this is pretty well dry up here, I think it's, I think it's mostly dry by now, I am going in and adding my next layer of red onto the glass, and this is going to give some of the areas a little bit more of an intense color and I can bring up some of the texture from the glass that like fluted uh, pressed design in there. I can define a bit here and there and um, basically just kind of make it look a little bit more finished and that's how I like to work with watercolor. I feel like uh, when you add those layers it helps kind of bring the piece together and give you a little bit more um, a little bit more of a crisp look. I am going around some of the ice cube, that ice cube there that's pretty prominent and just kind of like uh, brushing in a little bit of color. I'm also going around that wedge of lime there. I am using a, a technique where I'm just kind of putting some color and then dabbing it and spreading it out that way so it's a little bit choppy and mottled because I want to get that texture of like the pulp and whatever's in that glass. I think that looks pretty interesting. And I'm dabbing on some of the green on the lime peel to give it the lime peel texture. I also intensified the um, the little hull on the strawberry. And I used some of the um, phthalo green and some yellow for that, some Indian yellow. I flicked on a little of the green too because I felt like it just needed a little bit more movement in the background. And I like to do that sometimes, especially if it's a painting that's kind of simple and I'm not too fussy or worried about it. Now I have a white paint pen. I'm adding that salt or sugar on the rim and I'll be putting in a few other highlights with that. This is just a sketch. This is not some sort of, um, you know, big art project. It's in a tiny sketchbook that's about four inches by four or four and a half by four and a half or so. It's a small sketchbook. And I'm just 
playing around with my media here. I really like these white pens from Mr. Pen. They come in a pack of six for like 10 bucks and they're nice and opaque. They're an acrylic paint pen and they have, I think like a one, maybe they're, they're a bullet tip. They're a little bit bigger than like a Posca extra fine pen. I'd say they're probably like, I don't know, one millimeter maybe. Uh, I'm not hundred percent sure, but anyways, they're thicker than a gel pen and I like them for those more bold, bold marks. Um, they flow really well too and they're nice and opaque but you can use whatever you have. Now I'm using some of my uh, color pencils. The pencils I tend to use on top of watercolor are wax-based pencils because they show up a little bit better. They're more opaque. And I often will grab my Prismacolor pencils because they are right in the pencil case right next to my desk. So I do tend to reach for those, but um, you can use any color pencils you have. They don't even have to be wax-based, whatever you like. Um, I do like to use a water-resistant pencil for this stage because then if I decide to sneak in some watercolor around them, I won't dissolve them, which I like. And uh, you really just use whatever you have. That, that's going to be fine. Any decent quality pencil. I have a, mis a mishmash of pencils, so... Um, yeah, the ones that are in the case that I grab a lot, honestly, they're they're all there because they have colored barrels and, I, and they look really great as a as a um, studio decoration for my videos and stuff. So, but they happen to be decent. So those are why they show up a little more often in my mixed media pieces because unless I'm doing a lot with colored pencil, I will tend to just grab those because they're fine. They're not my favorites, but they're fine um, and they are always out. So uh, I'm a big believer in uh, using what's handy. And if you want to use a product more, then make sure you have it handy. Make sure it's like out on your table or easily accessible so you don't have to hunt for it because every time you have to hunt for something, you add friction to the process. And the more friction you add to a process, the more difficult it's going to be and the less likely you are to uh, to do it. So, um, so yeah, I just want to, just want to offer that little piece of advice. I'm adding a little bit more. I'm using a smaller brush here. Uh, this is a, it's like a number one or number two. It's a Da Vinci, I think. I could be wrong, but anyway, it's just a small round brush, golden tackle on, nothing to write home about, it's just fine. Um, I'm deepening some of my color and I do like to go back over with, um, transparent watercolor to deepen my colors and add a little bit of extra nuance and that pretty much finishes it off. I know it was simple, nothing too fancy about it, but uh, it was a lot of fun to paint and I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, happy crafting!